thank you so much. So I'm here to talk about uh, how we're trying to create an ecosystem of communities where brands and consumers can coexist. Like Ranjini said earlier, one of the areas where she's looking to get some innovation on is uh, consumer retention and how to build uh, with Am I all? OK. So first off, what is a community? A community is a group of people that come together because of shared pain points or interest. Uh, but before I get into my presentation, a quick video on uh, who creates a community? What is the purpose? Uh, why do people come together organically? So I'm just... OK. Can you play this? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Cooking. So cooking has always been a part and parcel of my life. You know, somewhere when I got married, I did not to see your cooking. So I thought of creating my own community where I can, you know, whatever I cook, I can share with my people and, you know, they can also like by share their own recipe. Yeah, I created a group in the year 2015, January. I added a few of my college friends, my, you know, my close friends, my neighbors, and that's it, 20, 25 people I added. And it was like fabulous, you know, seeing that jump. Today our group is five lakh members. Not everybody gets a ticket to my community because I am very, very choosy. If members are added, you know, I have to make sure that they are genuine. The conversation basically is all around food from morning breakfast till night dinner. One of the members, he had a plate of uh, leftover rice. So a lot of people, you know, they got into that post and they commented you can make some different different varieties of recipes like chila, pakora and all that. A couple of days back, a woman, she added more salt into the food. Now what can be the solution? So a lot of moms, you know, they came forward and they have suggested their solution there, you know, to the problem. So it is like a quick, quick fix. Basically, they come and get the solution. So what we just saw is how Nazia organically created a community which has 500,000 members and now there's more than 63 million members across 1,000 food communities. So communities have clearly arrived online across channels, across categories. Just take a moment to think how many communities are you all part of. I'm part of several communities, a founder community, a mom community, a cooking but like you can see, over two people are talking in communities. What does this mean for us as consumers, as brand marketeers? I think we've all been part of this evolution where we've seen us, each one of us, shifting from just balconies to halls. And what are balconies? This is a balcony where there's a one to many broadcast. All of us stepped online on balcony platforms, whether it's a Facebook page, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Twitter, where there's one too many broadcast. A number of us now organically huddle around in halls. Halls are nothing but communities where peer-to-peer -peer conversations happen. They're like rooms full of people. So what's a balcony or a broadcast right now over lunch will become a hall. And that's the difference, where there's a person-to-person -person connection. Let's draw out few differences between these two channels digitally. How do these channels grow? Most of the balconies grow because followers are garnered through paid marketing, whereas halls are created organically. There is no way to run a paid ad and grow a Facebook group or a WhatsApp group or a Telegram channel. Second engagement, and you can see the two numbers, person on an average engages 0.1 time a month in a balcony. So the engagement rate is 10%. And 90% of that engagement is actions, likes. We've all been speaking about, the earlier panel was talking about what part of the funnel. This is where a lot of top funnel marketing happens. 100%. So one person engages organically six times in a month, and half of those are conversations. The third, very interestingly, is content creation. So who creates content in a balcony? 
it's either a brand uh, or an individual, it's professionally created content in, uh, sorry, I meant an influencer or a brand, whereas in a hall, the content is created by consumers. It's created by you and me, which is what in the video. That leads to the final point on how do, how, how does influence get created in these two channels? And in balconies, it is through branded content, influencer content, whereas in halls, it's through peer-to-peer -peer trusted influence. no-brainer that communities should be in some way, shape, shape or form a part of the marketing mix because they are a part, integral part of the consumer buying journey or search journey. But to our surprise, we, find, uh, we found that this, this is not the case. Brands had no way to tap into communities. And these are the reasons why. Most of the communities are private truly walled gardens, not discoverable, not by any listening tool, not by any ad platform. There are no li listening tools in the world that can listen to these communities. And traditional ad-like formats will clearly not work. So a banner ad would not work because this is a group of people who talk, who are to who've come together organically or talking about what they care about. So traditional ad formats don't work. There is no way to discover communities. Think of it, can you go and discover communities on WhatsApp? You can only join a community if you've been asked to join or you can create a community. There's also no ways to get data-driven reporting in communities. And then we just asked ourselves, what would be the lay of land if it was possible to tap into communities and engage with consumers meaningfully? And this is what we told ourselves. It would be the end of broadcasting and the beginning of conversations. So that's why we created Conversite. Um, and our journey has been very interesting. But with Conversite, essentially, the endeavor is to create spaces and opportunities where brands and consumers can coexist. And the last two years, we've, we've learned a lot. Uh, we've leveraged communities for research, for marketing, and we've helped brands build communities. We today aggregate communities across several channels, Facebook groups, WhatsApp, Telegram, Reddit, and Discord. And we have access to 90,000 communities with 600 million non-unique members. Uh, and as you can see, some of the brands that have embraced communities uh, you know, are, are up on the screen. What I would like to say is that um, all of this access is through approved APIs and apps. So there is no scraping, there is no covert marketing. When we think of the brand's jobs to be done and what jobs can communities do for brands, uh, initially when we started and we asked some brands, uh, the first top of mind things were product launches or creating conversations, but we realized over the last two years that communities can deliver a far more number of jobs for the brand, whether it's sampling, lead generation, crisis management, category, creation and expansion. And how uh, and what are the capabilities to do these jobs? One is research and insights, like how Sudhanshu said in his keynote this morning, that the biggest intel comes from consumers. And there is no better intel that comes from real conversations uh, within consumers. So one is research and insights. Second is building word of mouth advocacy through leveraging existing communities around our category. So a food brand can go and find uh, 60 million members across food communities and go and talk to these consumers about things that they care about. And the third is building branded communities. Like Pragya said earlier in the session, it's to have the right metric of measurement. How do we measure effectiveness in communities? Uh, we cannot just lift and shift. It's not just top of the mind reach eyeballs. Like I said, these are rooms full of people who are talking to each other, talking about things that they care about. What's the first thing that we measure? We measure talkability. Because we've gone and engaged with these consumers, are they talking more about my category, my brand? Are they creating content? And the food 
trans, uh, Maggie. Just one intervention, there were 25,000 user generated content that was created around one of their product launches. The second measure of effectiveness is a purchase intent action. It could be a lead, sample, etc. And we've seen communities deliver hundreds of thousands of leads uh, for certain brands, all organically. And the third is mind measures, where we've seen tremendous results for a large hair depilation brand. We saw a shift in usage from 50 to 66%. Slides are very interesting. It compares top. We, we spoke about the marketing funnel earlier on in the panel, and this compares uh, influencer, which typically sits top of the funnel, to community marketing, which is more mid to bottom funnel. And this is a case study of a product launch within oral care, and it's comparing influencer and community side by side. Uh, of the total spends. Less than 10% were done on communities, and the rest was all on celebrity influencers. The total engagement on the influencer it was, it was the top there, top of the funnel, high level engagements. In communities, the total engagements were 50,000. But of those 7.5 million engagements, only 0.2%, which is 15,000, were comments. And in communities of the 50,000, about 42% were conversations, which is 21,000. And this is with less than 10% of the budgets in communities. Now, when we double clicked and saw how, what comprised that engagement and what were those comments on influencer platforms versus communities, there was a stark difference. So most of the comments on influencers were you know, aspirational emojis, two or three word comments. Whereas in communities, people not just posted conversations, but actual product images because they went and bought the product and a lot of conversation around uh, how do I use this? This was a new category of oil pulling. How do I use the product? Can I use it on my two year old? How many times a day do I use it? So people were clearly very excited, but it was a big learning that there needs to be more education around the category itself. So uh, this is a very sort of tactical but tangible slide. Uh, get this question a lot. When brands have to build their own communities, what are the few things to consider? And here are the sh should like these are the design choices you'll have to take when you build your community. Uh, the first is why do we want to build the community? And as we heard from the panel earlier, one of the panelists said that. They're looking at communities and conversations. Is your objective research? Is it acquisition, retention, support, building a community of evangelists, or is it all of the above? But it's very important to know what is the purpose of building that community. Second, where should I build the community? Should I post it on an existing platform, an existing social media platform like a Facebook, WhatsApp, Telegram, or should it be self-hosted? Again, the answer lies in what is the size of the community and where does your audience spend most of the time? If it's a very close community of evangelists with 50 or 100 members, the product testing community, it can be built on WhatsApp. But if the ambition is to build a very large community and constantly acquire new users, ideally it should be built on an existing social media platform. Of course, if it's a brand like Apple that's already invested so much in building a community on their own platform, then that's the, that's the place it should be. But this is a very, very important design choice to consider. Uh, the third is, uh, what do I want my consumers to do in the community, and where do I get my first set of users from? Uh, the first set of users should be the power users, your existing evangelists, and one very important thing which no one thinks of is there are so many digital touch points I have with my consumer today. I could have a website, I have a large CRM database, uh, I, I, I could have own social media pages, but all of these are still disjointed. 
If we have a community, we can funnel all of these into a community which provides an always on nurturing uh, to engage, call it a CRM to community because just having a database of users is not good enough. They need to be always on nurtured. And the fourth is how do we measure? One metric to measure success of a community um, and what we say, you know that you've hit a minimum viable community, it is conversations between members. And that metric is admin to member post ratio. So simply put, if there are 100 posts in a community, 80 or 90 posts have to be from members talking to each other. I'll be around later if there are any questions on communities and uh, you know we do have a booth outside where you can come and discover that what are people talking about for your category or brand. Thank you.